My mother was pregnant with me at seven months. She was waitressing at a diner in San Diego, California. And my dad was very, very angry that she was having this baby. Very angry. But at seven months pregnant, my dad finds where she is, walks in the diner, takes her to the back in the kitchen, throws her on the ground, and stomps over and over again on her stomach. Throwing her, punching her, kicking her. But you know what? I lived. I spent 13 years in Alameda County foster care system. 13 years of, and more than that, of feeling rejection, going through severe, brutal child abuse, and having your mom and the stepdad drop you off at the psychiatric facility of the hospital and saying, we don't want this kid anymore. I had a lot of behavioral and emotional problems. The professional spent hours and hours with me over days to come up with these diagnoses, these labels. And at six years old, they said that I had erratic psychosis and that uh, I had the IQ of a two-year-old. And I had small and large motor skill problems where I could not walk down or walk upstairs at six years old. I couldn't time myself to walk downstairs. If I started that one stair, I'd fall all the way down. I couldn't count to 10, and they said that I was not adoptable. So, I went through a series of foster homes, and then one special foster home took me in for a weekend, just Friday through Sunday, and it was a home on a farm, and I loved it. I, you would catch me not talking to any other human beings because I didn't trust anybody. Because if I couldn't, you know, my own mom and dad gave me up, how could I trust anybody? But you'd find me in one place, the chicken coop, with a ton of chickens, and I love birds, because I figured one day as a kid, I'm going to fly away. And what they discovered at 9 and 10 years old was that I wasn't all the labels, all the professionals that diagnosed me. That I was a sponge. I just needed somebody to invest inside, invest with, invest in me. And I started learning to read and write at 9 and 10 years old. I was that delayed. And so here I am, a sophomore in high school now, and I am in so much trouble. And I'm hanging with my friend Arlen, and we see some people in the yard. So I walk over there, and I see two guys battling each other, rap, and I'm like seeing this venom, this poison, this, this anger come out of them. They bring a guy up, and now it's me against this guy. I know that I got all this anger inside of me from being a foster youth, feeling rejected, abandoned, all this stuff, and I need to find another creative way to get this anger out. But this is what was going on in my life at 16, 17 years old, and this is what saved my life, was to be able to creatively express myself, to get what was on the inside out. This anger, this bitterness, this resentment, this hatred of even myself, I hated myself. And I went through this counseling course, how to understand my anger and my rage, and it trans my life transformed completely. I got reinstated back in high school. I graduated high school with a 1.83 GPA. Now those numbers won't do anything for you. But I'm the first one in my family to graduate high school. My mom dropped out in ninth grade. My dad didn't even go. I'm the first one to break this cycle that I, I knew I wasn't destined to be a loser. I knew that I had to be something. A sportsman, a teacher, a musician. Chase your dreams no matter what. All these seeds that were planted inside of me, planted from pastors to Boy Scout leaders to teachers to mentors to counselors, all those seeds, seeds of love, seeds of honor, seeds of integrity, seeds of determination, seeds of courage, all those seeds wouldn't take root until I believed in myself and until I loved myself. And once you can love yourself, you can accept love and give love to others. The only person destroying me was me, and I was doing a good job at it. My favorite word is tenacity. Tenacity. Persistent determination. Perseverance, stick to itness. To never give up. Everything has been so difficult from a little kid to a 20 year old that was trying to find his life, to fight for his life, to 
fight for his life. Tenacity. I learned right then at that point that it wasn't about my IQ. This little foster kid that was given up. It was about my I will. It wasn't about how much smarts I have. It was about how much heart I have. And I was never going to let my past infect my future. I was never going to let my past define me, confine me. I was going to one day make my past and allow it to refine me. See, the, ma the past is not meant to hold you back. The past for me was meant to prepare me to speak all over the world, to share a story of hope, share a message of hope, share some inspiration. My life transforms. By the time I was 25 years old, I made my first $100,000 a year. By the time I was 32, I made my first million. Nothing could stop me. See, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. When you change the way you look at your life, your life will change. I used to look at my life as a curse, as a reject. Now I look back at my life and it's a blessing because I overcame so much adversity because I found my greatness. And if I could share something huge with you, don't ever let your weakness destroy your greatness. Every one of you is born with greatness. Every one of you.